Hey, what's up guys? Skelet here. Today I'm going to be doing a video of upgrading the PlayStation 3 from its 160GB hard drive to a 120GB SSD. So yes, another silicon power SSD. I know I just put one in the Cordeo MacBook Pro not too long ago, but I have, alas, gotten another one. So this guy, I, for anyone who does not know, I got this two or so weeks ago um, off of eBay for around $120 with a 160GB uh, drive in it, and this would by the model number on the back be a revision my phone will focus come on okay it's not focusing uh, this would be a CECH A01 PlayStation 3 let me flip that around properly a little PlayStation logo up here is what I'm talking about so this is the hardware backwards compatible one you guys can all see me in there actually this thing's so damn glossy anyway so basically we're going to be putting an SSD in this thing so it's not that hard really, um, fortunately Sony makes this pretty easy to upgrade or replace the hard drive in one of these, I guess they know that hard drives do fail, and Xbox, but anyways, those things are not as easy to put a custom hard drive in, but anyways, and also, you know, SSDs are kick-ass too, so we're going to be doing this. I know the performance gains of this are marginal really, and this could probably be better used, but whatever, we're doing it anyways. So I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be kind of showing you guys how to do it, not really, this isn't so much a tutorial, this is just more or less me doing the upgrade. But anyway, so I'm going to go on ahead and start on this, and I'm going to get in a better position to do this. Okay, or more or less just flip the console over like this. It's not hitting up there, is it good? I don't want to scratch this thing more than it already kind of is. But anyway, so basically, to get inside of one of these things to get out of this hard drive, it's actually pretty simple. It's almost kind of stupid this simple. Let me flip my hands. So here you go. So there's this little tiny tab right here. All you got to do is just pop out this little door, and then the door falls off. And there you go with that. Now, can I do, if I can do this one handed, that'd be awesome. Fortunately, these consoles are, these things are, uh, oh, there you go, I did get it, yay. So then what you do is when you pull out this little, so you unscrew this little blue screw down here, get this little dude out, sorry if the camera work is awful, I'm having to focus on this and holding the camera at the same time. Then you take this little metal tab, and then you kind of, can I get my hand out of the way, you kind of push back like this, and you pull out, and out goes the hard drive. Why is there all this grease on the top? I don't know. So basically, this guy is going to look a little more, more or less like that. So I'll do this right quick. And the magic of editing, I am back. Now unfortunately, this screw here decided not to go in because the SSD's screw hole is not in the very correct spot. It's a little bit over, it grinded it a little bit too much. And on top of that, the screw was a little stripped anyways. So that screw did not go in and it has ended up in my garbage can, which you can't see down there. So, time to put the SSD back in, which is actually pretty dang straightforward, if I want to be honest. Um, let's see, can I, by chance, get this, there you go, and get this one-handed for the most part, nice. And then, of course, we can put in the little screw, which is actually pretty cool, that's how that screw there works, the little blue one, actually has a little, um, has a little, like, nub on the end that does not have the, uh, little threads on it, so you can stick it in there, which is kind of nice. And then you take this little cover thingy. Oh god, don't, don't, don't fling it across the air. It's a good idea. Just kind of like you kind of wedge it in there. There's a little tiny like tab over here. You kind of wedge in and you put that in, and the new drive is in. Now keep in mind, um, if you do this, I'll make sure to back up any data before doing this. Like use the little backup utility in the operating system to a spare little drive or spare backup drive or even a thumb drive if you have one large enough for all your data. Move it to that drive, and then once you get this one up and running, you're going to need a USB little flash drive, such as this one. You don't need a very large one. The update file is not that large to install the system firmware. Now, I did notice, um, I actually tried this earlier and filmed this earlier, but it wasn't too good of a quality, so it's in there good. Yeah, it is. Basically, it'll have some of the user accounts on there, but won't have all the data saved onto this. So that's one thing you do have to remember. But anyway, so... Yeah, that's basically that. Um, I'm going to go on ahead and boot up the machine and show you guys that the drive does indeed work in here. And that's basically about it. I'm going to go on ahead and get this beast all hooked up and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so I'm back at the TV. My phone's not having, not liking this focus. Alright, so basically I'm going to go over to the system settings. Okay, I am sorry. I am sorry. Oh my god. Okay, I really apologize about this damn controller. This controller sucks. This is my... Uh, other controller I have left over. I actually sold my Slim PS3 not too long ago, and this controller is the only one I have with a dead battery and random input, so kind of sucks. But, anyways, um, system information. There we go. 97 gigs free out of 111 gigabytes. So that means that the SSD upgrade indeed did work. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the system. 
and yes, we want to turn off the system. And therefore, we shall now see this guy power off. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bye.